good afternoon. Good afternoon and welcome to the 110th commencement ceremony of Samuel Merritt University. I am Dr. Celeste Villanueva, Assistant Academic Vice President, and I am pleased to welcome you to our ceremony today. This is a time of recognition and celebration for not only our graduates, but for all of you, their family and friends who have supported them during their rigorous course of study. The commencement ceremony begins with the procession of graduates, followed by the members of the faculty, university administrative officers, and the Board of Regents. Dr. Yvonne Wong Kim, Dean of the College of Health Sciences, will lead the procession of physician assistant and occupational therapy candidates. Dr. Lorna Kendrick, Dean of the College of Nursing, will lead the procession of nursing candidates. Now, will you please stand for the processional of the graduates, faculty, university administration, special guests, and Board of Regents.
Please be seated. My name is Fred Baldini. I'm the Provost and Vice President for Academic Affairs at Samuel Merritt University. Good afternoon and welcome to this very special occasion. I'd also like to welcome those of you, those of who are joining us today via live stream video. I am honored to serve as the presiding officer of this important event in the lives of our graduates their families, friends, and loved ones. Samuel Merritt Hospital, the original education program of the university, was established in 1909. The school has since evolved into the present day Samuel Merritt University, an independent, nationally recognized, multidisciplinary health professions institute of higher education. During its 113-year history, the university has undergone many changes and has survived many challenges, including two pandemics. 
As I reflect on this past year, I'm compelled to thank the students, the faculty, the staff, everyone to help us achieve what we're doing today. To be successful, not only has Samuel Merritt University met the challenges of COVID, the COVID-19 pandemic, but we have positioned ourselves to be even more successful in the future. Our mission to educate students to be highly skilled and compassionate healthcare professions, professionals who positively transform the experience of care, care for diverse communities is appropriate now more than ever. The, community, the current pandemic has shown us that and it has inspired us to do even more. We will continue to prepare our students for the future to meet the healthcare needs of our communities. I want to thank the graduates today for taking on this important responsibility. It is now my honor to introduce President Ching Ha Wong. President will give you a words of welcome. Thank you. Thank you, Provost Baldini. I have to tell you something special. This is Provost Baldini's last commencement. He has served higher education for 35 years. 35 years. So, he's gonna retire starting tomorrow, so he, he doesn't really wanna miss this occasion. So, um, thank you, Fred. So welcome to this very special occasion, our 2022's winter commencement. My name is Ching Hua Wang. As the president of SMU, I am honored to be here with all of you, the class of 428 graduates from many academic programs at the university who are graduating today, which include 38 from the PA program, Six from the Master of OT program, and, and two from the uh, Doctorate of uh, OT program. 28 from the Doctor of uh, uh, Nursing Practice. 25 from the MSN in Case Management. 26 from the CRNA program, 114 from the Family Nurse Practice Program, 108, whopping, whopping 185 of you receiving the BSM program. <laughs> You who are here belong to a very special group. You are resilient. You refuse to let the pandemic prevent you from achieving your dreams. You did not quit. Instead, you chartered your own destiny. You have shown a great example of the abilities to apply your critical thinking skills to learn, adjust, and problem solve. You developed flexibility, tenacity and perseverance in the middle of a crisis in a global scale. Now, more than ever, the world needs your skills as compassionate and diverse healthcare professionals who have the grit to handle tough situations. As revealed by the pandemic, there are plenty of tough situations around us, especially in the underserved communities. I hope that through this pandemic, you are more appreciative of life and you find your inner strength and core values to serve these communities. Through our collective work, us in health sciences education and you in healthcare delivery, we are all aiming to achieve health equity and remove health disparity 
in the communities we serve. It is wonderful to be with all of you today on such a joyous occasion. This is a big day for all of you, our graduates, but also for your families, friends, faculty, and staff who are with you today to recognize, celebrate, and honor your achievements. To our graduates, I offer congratulations to your hard-earned achievements. Earning your bachelor's, master's, and doctoral degrees in all these health sciences fields is a major accomplishment that carries with it major responsibilities to the healthcare professions and the people you will serve in your daily work. While we celebrate your achievements today, I want us all to recognize that for many of our graduates, the road here was not easy. Many of you faced financial and or personal challenges, be that caring for loved ones, raising little ones, or overcoming any number of uh, circumstances that could have provided insurmountable obstacles. On top of all these challenges, all of you have endured the pandemic. But you persevered, you overcame, and you rose to the challenge. Today, we see the reward of your hard work and dedication. And the beauty of this is that once you have the degree in your hand, nobody can take it away from you. Going forward, you may suffer unexpected losses in your life, such as losing uh, a loved one, a friend, etc. However, you will never, never lose your hard-earned degree. Further, you will have the honor of joining healthcare professionals on the front lines of saving and enriching lives. Our shared healthcare profession is noble and impactful, and perhaps more so today. The need for dedicated healthcare professionals who serve with compassion has never been greater. When you actively engage in healthcare, especially in underserved communities, your work is consequential and makes a profound difference in the lives of the people you serve. You should all be very proud of what you have achieved. So let's celebrate you today. Let's celebrate those of you who are the first in your family to graduate with a healthcare professional degree. For those of you who are the pioneers in your family who are entering the health care professions, would you please stand and be recognized? <laughs> what an achievement you have had and I would, also like to, I would also like to call the veterans who are among our graduates today. Please stand and be recognized and appreciated. Thank you for your service to our country. Let's celebrate all of you who have achieved this major milestone in your life. So would all the graduates from all of the academic programs please stand and be recognized. Thank you. I'm, I'm just so proud of you. So happy for you. I'd also ask you, our graduates, to be mindful of those in your lives who made your graduation today possible through their support and sacrifice. This could be a family member or friend who offered encouragement during a difficult time. This could be a healthcare professional who set an example and inspired you to enter this noble profession. This could be a classmate 
who walked with you during a difficult stretch. This could be the faculty member who saw your potential and pushed you and pushed you very hard to go further than perhaps you thought you could go. And in some cases, this could be your children who sometimes went to bed without a good night kiss from you because you were preparing for an exam. To the families and friends who are here with us today, I thank you for your support to today's SMU's graduates along the way. I ask you please to stand and be recognized by our graduates. There, there, is a special, there is a special group of people who are gathered here solely because of you, okay? They are the faculty members who put their heart and soul in your success, day in and day out. They taught the courses to you, they provided mentorship to you, they guided you in your professional pursuit, and they pushed you when it's getting difficult. They did all these simply because that they care so much about you. To all of the faculty members, you, you owe your unwavering gratitude. So would all of the faculty members please stand and be recognized. Thank you. We also have many staff members who are in uh, among the crowd here too. They are an integral, uh, integral part of uh, your success as well. Oftentimes they do behind the scenes work and they are the ones who carry out all kinds of administrative activities um, and directly interfacing with you or indirectly, right? Without their hard work and dedication, your success would have not been uh, possible. So would the staff members in the audience, please stand and be recognized as well. Thank you. On November the 3rd, just a few weeks ago, we made a couple of public announcements. One is about the city of Oakland's approval for the university to build a 10-story new campus headquarters building in downtown Oakland. And another is a donation of over $10 million to the university by Dr. and Mrs. Lewis. This is the largest gift to the university in our 113-year history. If you haven't heard about this, here is the story. Dr. Russell Lewis, was a 1965 graduate of our School of Podiatric Medicine, the only black student in his family. And uh, yes, very proud. And a beloved Bay Area podiatrist for over 30 years. He often told people that the two greatest things happened in his life were meeting and marrying his wife who, is, uh, who was a registered nurse at Children's Hospital in San Francisco for over 30 years. And the second thing is graduating from our university. So Dr. Lewis's family lacked money and formal education, but they valued intellectual pursuit. His father, a fisherman, was self-educated. And Russell was the first in his family to attend college. He joined the Army after college, served our country honorably, then worked as a med tech at Kaiser Permanente here in this region. And then he became fascinated by the foot and ankle x-rays he processed for physicians. This inspired him to, uh, to become a podiatrist. As we strive to grow, this transformative gift will allow us to offer over $500,000 
of scholarships per year, every year, forever, in perpetuity. It will greatly enhance our ability to attract and retain the best and the brightest students, many of whom will follow Dr. Lewis's footsteps as the first in their family to go to college and receive a Samuel Merritt education with significant help uh, from this uh, scholarship. I am telling you Dr. Lewis's story because you will help to carry on Dr. Lewis's legacy forever. Dr. and Mrs. Lewis will be honored in our new building in downtown Oakland. Dr. Lewis's story leads, leads me to remind our graduates that your association with Samuel Mary University does not end today. You are made at SMU. After graduation, you will join the proud ranks of our alumni a dedicated network of individuals who continue to support our university in many ways and advocate for innovation and compassion in healthcare, just like Dr. and Mrs. Lewis. In closing, dear graduates, you have my deepest admiration for your accomplishments today. May your careers be filled with joy with humanity, with empathy, and with compassion for the people you serve. Congratulations, and thank you, and stay well. Thank you, President Wong. <clears throat> I'm very pleased, in fact, I'm honored, to introduce the 2022 commencement speaker, Ms. Jane Garcia. Ms. Garcia is the Chief Executive Officer of La Clinica de la Raza, a federally qualified health center headquartered in Oakland, California. In her 40 years as a CEO, Ms. Garcia has grown La Clinica from a $2 million project to a $145 million organization, employing more than 1,200 people, seeing over 80,000 patients per year, uh, and they're served across uh, multiple sites in Alameda, uh, Contra Costa, and Solano County. La, Cl La Clinica is, a, is the largest community health clinic in the state of California. Ms. Garcia is a community advocate and an activist with a passion for preserving community health care and for all uh, residents without regards of income or immigration status. The mission of La Clinica is to improve the quality of life of the diverse communities it serves by providing culturally appropriate, accessible, and high quality health care for all. The health centers provide the full gambit of primary care services, dental, behavioral health, and optometry. Her commitment to the community of healthcare has been recognized by numerous organizations, and she serves on many, many important boards. Uh, and I, I think you can see why we're so excited about her joining us today. She's completely in alignment with what we're trying to do at Samuel Merritt University. So please join me in welcoming Ms. Garcia to the podium. Thank you. Good afternoon, graduates. <laughs> it's such a singular honor for me to be with you today to share in this very special occasion. We celebrate and honor you for all your hard work and for the accomplishments that have brought you to this point. You bring us so much hope for the future. We hope you understand the great admiration we hold for you as we recognize all the heavy lifting you have just completed to get to this juncture. My daughter's a nurse, and I saw firsthand the discipline, the dedication, the late nights, and commitment it takes to get to this point. So a big shout out to you. I had the pleasure of walking in with you and your families and everybody is so excited and so proud and we join in that celebration as well. You're entering the healthcare profession at a very interesting time. Uh, I'm not gonna mince words. Um, we need you desperately. 
<laughs> especially as we enter this new period with the, facing, the change facing of the public health emergency created by COVID-19. But even before the public health emergency, California's healthcare system was already facing a staffing challenge as a generation of baby boomers began to retire, many accelerating the retirement plans following this intense period of time when our workforce historically, heroically put themselves in the front line many times at a cost to themselves and to the families. That's who we are as healthcare workers. The reality is that the workforce shortages have been projected for a while and multiple warning signs uh, appeared, but yet the state's generation of healthcare workers continues even today to lag behind the growing demands. In just 10 years, for example, California is projected to face a shortfall of more than 4,100 primary care uh, clinicians. And for nurses, that number is even larger. California has a shortage of over 45,000 nurses. And again, that existed before the pandemic, which has only become, made this issue more acute and critical. California is expected to have the worst nursing shortage in the entire country over the next 10 years. And that's why I have such admir admiration for all of you. But I also want to give Samuel Merritt University a big shout out for jumping into the fray and doing something about these ongoing workforce shortages. So thank you, thank you, Samuel Merritt University. I want you to know that your community health centers are also working very hard to alleviate these shortages. In just the state legislative session alone, we were successful in securing legislative actions that permanently expands telehealth services, that grows our behavioral health workforce to include associate degree clinicians, and that creates new training programs for nurse practitioners and physician assistants. In January of next year, in just a couple of weeks, nurse practitioners may be able to practice independently once certain provisions have been met. I want you to know I fought hard for that one. I love that one. <laughs> our mid-level practitioner, practitioners have certainly earned our support over the many years that they have been in service. One of my favorite uh, challenges, changes rather, includes the formal uh, recognition of community healthcare workers, which community health centers now have the option of employing as part of the care team. So everybody working at the top of their licensure. I know how much we all care about equity and creating access to the healthcare system. I believe this addition will go a long way toward helping our underserved communities by creating new pipelines, leveraging trusted community partners, and actually contributing to the economic well being of some of our most vulnerable. The healthcare delivery system is changing right before our eyes. And this is very good news. Heaven knows we've needed this change. For our new graduates, for you, this means you're coming into the field just in time to have a say in how the healthcare and delivery system can be changed and molded for some of our most vulnerable. We are, as the saying goes, building the plane while flying it. I think this will give you the graduates, tremendous leverage to help influence how your profession can be part of the solution. As a provider in the safety net, and I know the Medicaid system the best, I can share the most significant changes underfoot, which I hope um, you will benefit from. Certainly the Medicaid system is undergoing tremendous change under the state initiative called uh, CalAIM. The name says it all, advancing uh, and innovating Medi-Cal. And this multi-year initiative spans from 2022 through 2027, it's a pilot project, and aims to improve the quality of life 
and health outcomes of Medicaid communities, including and especially those with the most complex health and social needs by implementing broad delivery system changes as well as program and payment reform across the Medi-Cal program. CalAIM's broad reach is intended to help all Medi-Cal enrollees through a, a focus on population health and greater emphasis on prevention and overall wellness. Now I know that's music to your ears as I'm sure that that focus, prevention and wellness, can you believe it? We're focusing in on that. That's played a role, that played a role in you picking the, the fields that you did. This evolution will allow us to more holistically concentrate on the social determinants of health. I'm seeing firsthand the shift from the widgets mentality, in other words, how many visits did we generate, to making a difference in the quality of life of our patients, value-based care. CalAIM priorities include identifying and managing comprehensive needs through whole person care approaches and the social drivers of health. The whole person uh, care emphasis signals the migration to a more complex delivery system uh, that engages an interdisciplinary team on the patient's behalf. Multidisciplinary team. That means that you are going to have a bigger voice as you enter the field and help create this model. Another priority is to uh, improve quality outcomes, reduce health disparities, and transform the delivery system through value-based initiatives, modernization, and payment reform. That's bold, we're touching the money, so that's very, very bold and very important. Finally, um, it is essential that we make uh, Medi-Cal a more consistent and seamless system for enrollees to navigate by reducing complexity and increasing flexibility. If we're going to be successful though, it's going to require a strong commitment from a broad network of community, uh, of healthcare workers and partners, including the health plans, providers, that be you, and community-based organizations. And certainly telehealth adoption will serve as a very disruptive factor as technology often tends to be, which I uh, believe will change things for the better, certainly by creating greater access for our communities. I know you care about equity, and this new model offers the oppor opportunity to directly address the inequities in our system. This pilot, with very ambitious goals, and working to change a system that is ingrained in the status quo is going to make a huge difference. And I know many things can go wrong and we're going to make a lot of mistakes, but I'm an, I'm an optimist and I know how many things can also go right. I just know we're going to give it the old-fashioned college try. And as new graduates, you have a unique opportunity to help mold and create the future systems. We're so proud of you and we trust you. Thank you so much for joining the team. Blessings to you and your families. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Garcia. It is now my honor to introduce the Dean of the College of Nursing, Dr. Lorna Kendrick. Thank you, Provost Baldini, and I just would like to thank Ms. Garcia. We know that we have a daunting healthcare system to fix and change, and she gave you solutions. And one of the solutions that I'm very proud that we contribute to is our case management program. And I am honored to introduce our speaker who comes directly from that program, and I'm sure will share some of her thoughts about the changes that are coming. And so I'd like to welcome our speaker for today, Yana Timpl Timplanza, from the Master of Science in Case Management program. Welcome.
Thank you, Dr. Kendrick, for that very sweet introduction and um, for um, Ms. Garcia for that very inspiring um, sharing. I'm excited to be able to continue the lineage of what you started for us. And um, so I'm excited for us coming in and working together. So good afternoon, my classmates, esteemed faculty, honored guests, family, and friends. My name is Yana Alethea Mosqueda Templanza, and I am part of the amazing and illustrious Masters in Nursing Case Management Cohort. <laughs> I am so very honored to speak with you all today to celebrate the culmination of our work, growth, experiences, and evolutions. Fellow grads, if it hasn't hit you yet, we are out here. We have completed writing assignments, we have meticulously researched and read articles, made countless presentations, and have passed all of the exams. Not only is this graduation so meaningful because of what we and our closest loved ones were able to journey through together, but also because of the very unique and extraordinary time that we all chose to enter this field. We've been called the pandemic class. COVID painted our experiences, and we all did our best to learn and adjust quickly as students. We became the human faces, minds, and hearts at the front line, and we met patients who moved us and altered our perspectives, teachers who expanded our understanding, and classmates who became our grounding totems in this new reality. Along the course of our studies, we witnessed national and worldwide catastrophes, personal and collective grief and pain, and institutions that didn't make sense. But we also witnessed healing in multiple forms, people showing up to be of service, innovative ways to communicate and connect, and beautiful glimpses of humanity and what it is capable of, creativity, community, dignity, and care. In our most difficult times, we were called to remember the hope from these good moments. But as we all know, it's not so easy. We are learned and skilled in the discipline of critical analysis, assessing and identifying problems, looking at lab values and levels of function, using all of our senses to alert the pathology to keep people safe. This type of knowledge is good for saving us in the moment, but we, what we have also come to know is that it takes a lot more to sustain health in the long run. There are many schools of thought that speak to this, that look at a wider holistic view that take into account a larger web made of the psyche, environment, society, and history, and that reach back generations and across cultures. This approach usually takes a bit more time and trust as it calls on us to acknowledge the fullness and complexity of people's humanity, which is so important for the care of those we serve, but also emphatically for, for our own process as facilitators of healing. Now I want to be transparent over the last few years, I've witnessed so much change in myself and close circle and in our collective wor world. And to be honest, I am still in process. As new students entering the healthcare field, all of us together were very conscious of how the pandemic so deeply affected healthcare workers at the front line. We became painfully aware of the struggles experienced by nurses and various practitioners who nevertheless showed up so courageously and fully but who could understandably, but, but who understandably struggled to sustain the magnitude of their work and the demands. But what we learned from all of that was, as the caregivers for others, we also need to and must take care to take care of ourselves. We must value ourselves, our lives, and our gifts just as much as we nurture and care for that of others. One thing that I find to be both powerful and humbling at the same time is to imagine our place and our impact within a long span of time. And not just imagine it, but to feel it in our bodies. The sociologist and peace scholar Elise Boulding describes something that she calls a 200-year present. So if we are to imagine our own 200-year present, it would begin with the year of the birth of the oldest person you knew when you were a child. And then on the other end of the boundary would be the 100th birthday of the youngest person that you've held in your arms. 
That would be about a 200 year span that touches our own lives and that we directly touch. So if we wanted to try this, we can take a moment to think about the oldest person that we knew as a kid and then the youngest person that we have held in our arms and that 200 year present. And here is a reflection on Boulding's idea. We know that what we are walking into, we have been walking into for generations. And walking out of this will happen in generational time too. If this is the work of the rest of our lifetimes, then we have to honor and protect space and time for staying well and for staying whole. And that also means that we have to surround ourselves with others who can help us to carry love and trust and hope for what might be weeks or months or years when it's too much for us to ask of ourselves. If this is the work for the rest of our lifetimes, we also do it on behalf of people we might never know. So as we, the SMU class of 2022, embark upon the next steps on our collective journeys, I invite us all to remember how we are all on a unique and unified collective journey, that what we've accomplished today and will accomplish tomorrow resonates deeply into the past which maintains us as well as the future which sustains us. Before taking this next step forward, I want to offer gratitude to the people, movements, and elements that carried us to this day. I want to thank our teachers and mentors who have poured their knowledge and wisdom into us and left us with encouragement and inspiration on this path. I also want to give gratitude to our family and friends who cared for us and infused us with the love and hope we needed to get this far. I want to personally thank my own family, my parents, brother, cousins, titas, titas, grandparents, sisters, friends, everybody, my beautiful family who held me up, cared for me, and taught me how to love fiercely, to be generous and sincere in my work, to know and love where I come from, and to dream and believe in futures unknown. And I want to thank the lineage of healers that came before us, who represent generations of surviving ancestors holding deep healing wisdom. I, offer, I also offer so much love and gratitude to our loved ones that are not here with us today, but are ever present. To my dearest classmates, I hope that we continue to use our knowledge, pr practice, and gifts to illuminate and brighten the world around us, to do hard things with integrity, focus, and courage, to embody the honor of who we are and who are we becoming at this exceptional and extraordinary point in time, and that we simply and sincerely care for ourselves so that we may be able to care well for others. Have fun, and thank you. I cherish you all. The future looks bright. Thank you so much, Ms. Templanza. The students, in the, grad, uh, the students <clears throat> graduating today from Samuel Merritt University are selected from a pool of highly qualified applicants. The successful completion of their studies is an indication that these students are goal-oriented, academically astute, and committed to their prospective professions. Yet, within each of these groups of students, there are individuals who have proven themselves to be exceptional. It is then appropriate that we honor those students who have established records extraordinary and accomplishments many during their time here. We will now present the Outstanding Student Awards. Please welcome to the podium Dr. Yvonne Wong Kim, Dean of the College of Health Sciences, and then Dr. Lorna Kendrick, Dean of the College of Nursing. Good afternoon. The Outstanding Physician Assistant Student Award is given to the student who best exemplifies a combination of excellence in the classroom and in the clinical setting, while demonstrating commitment to the service consistent with the mission of the program and the university. I am pleased to present the 2022 Outstanding Physician Assistant Student Award to Elena Castro, congratulations.
Well, the outstanding um, doctoral, Doctor of Nursing Practice Student Award is presented to two students whose participation in the program is most consistent with leadership, service, and academic excellence. Expectations of the practice of nursing. I am pleased to present the 2022 Outstanding Doctor of Nursing Practice Award to Brittany Campanelli and Christy, Krista Smith. And next, we have the Outstanding Master of Science in Nursing Awards. And these are given each year to Master of Nursing students whose performance exemplifies the highest level of achievement. They have contributed to the advancement of the profession and have performed services outside of what we are expecting them to do. I am pleased to, represent, to present the 2022 Outstanding Master of Student Award to the case management student, um, Jacqueline Kith. I'm pleased to present the 2022 Outstanding Master of Science Award to the Family Nurse Practitioner students, Julia Jones and Douglas Stone. the honor of uh, presenting the 2022 Outstanding Master of, Master of Science in Nursing Award to the anesthesia student, Haley Reynolds, who I do believe is not here, but is someone planning to, I'll take it and I'll give it to her. Thank you. <laughs> Congratulations to the students. Now, the moment you've all been waiting for. The conferral of the degrees. I'd like to ask Dr. Uh, Wong Kim to return to the podium. Are you ready? <laughs> yes. Ms. Tana Summers, Chair of the Department of Physician Assistant, will congratulate the graduates of the Master Physician Assistance Program as they cross the stage to take a photo with President Wong and Ms. Lorraine Petty will call the graduates. Brianna Walter. Mike Santos. Blake Bechtel. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. 
Joseph Blumberg. Madison Schwitz. Sierra Gamble. Liz Dunkey. Lisa Weimer. Sam Calvey. Olivia Parker. Elisa Mian. Andrea Chen. Alexandra Niles. Summer Gonzalez. Pamela Patino Trier. Stevie Bautista. Kevin Wong. Angelique Diaz. Jessica Yu. Charmaine Santos. Eliana Norohian. <laughs> Maya Brent. <laughs> Elizabeth Kaufman. Monica Maria Diaz. Egberto Sainz. Christian Moreno. Monica Lapin. <laughs> Marina Fontaine Ho. Amrinder Danhoya. Skylar James. <laughs> Elena Castro. <laughs> David Adler. <laughs> Angelica F. Flores. Rania Gurgis.
Dominique Tecklenburg. Before I begin, I'd like to remind everyone on the stage with me and those of you in the audience to look at the back of your program in honor of someone that should have been here with us today, but she's not. And so I just wanted to do that because as we talk about, the, DN, the DNP graduates will be hooded by their DNP project chairs and receive congratulations from, the, from President Wong. Masters and bachelor's candidates will cross the stage and receive congratulations from their department faculty and President Wong, and Dr. Nikki Love, uh, Dr. Mr. Dennis McReynolds, and Ms. Michelle Wooler will call the names of the candidates. Thank you. Jose, uh, is, I think, Nikki Love is next? Yeah, thanks, Nikki. Hello, I am pleased to present to you the candidates for the degree of uh, the DNP. Can you please step up to the podium? Yvonne Bassart. Rochelle Lawn. <laughs> Ashley Haynes. Cynthia Stacy. <laughs> Omichi Ohajo. Raymond Pryor. <laughs> Casey Wenland. Clarissa Domingo Javier. <laughs> Samaria Disbar.
Roseanne Jamie Garcia Velasquez. Nelia Martinez. <laughs> Sanita Gupta. Sharon Bogan. Krista Smith. <laughs> Jessica Castro. Ravneet Sandhu. Kathleen Bayoa. <laughs> Hannah Kim. Francesca Jensen. <clears throat> Alina Khan. Van Tran.
Lisa Marie Lavallee. I'm pleased to present to you the candidates for the degree of Master of Science in Nursing. The MSN candidates will be uh, presented by Major. As your Major is called, please come forward. And I think we're ready to go. Ready to go. Thanks. We have Kevin Mai. Jordan Rokita. Arnell Magatti. Leyen Angel's son. Natsumi Abeliana. Crystal Chang. Ellen Limpen. Natalie Pina. Pena. My brother. Dallas Tokash. All right. Wana Beldi Anu. Clarissa Silvestri. <laughs> Tao Lee. <laughs> Estefalia Carlos. Stephanie Iza. <laughs> Caroline Lee. <laughs> Sarah Lowe. <laughs> Leah Herrera. Rachel Popovich. <laughs> Angel Maharaja. <laughs> Jana Tempelasa. <laughs> Who? Kit. Jacqueline Kit. Now we're ready for the FNP Family Nurse Practitioners. <laughs> Pearl 
Roma Liblin. Sarah Gallagher. Katie Aguero. Aguilar. I can't even read it. Oh. Yang Yang. Latoya Sr. <laughs> Melissa Stanton. <laughs> Jessica Tan Tran. Aisha Han. Cindy Yen. Lexmi Rampur. Theodora Garcia. Angel Mura. Hope I get it right. Kleena. Stockwell. All right, sister. Helen Kittop. Lydia. And Maria. Right now? I don't know which one. Okay, no. Okay. Stay right there. Nanima Taylor. I'm sorry. Ron Palmia. Can't read it. Caitlin Dietz. Debbie Pengagillian. <laughs> Zuha Amira. Bianca Das. <laughs> Olivia Suchek. <laughs> Marengi 
Holcomb. Jessica Montez. <laughs> Helena Lee. <laughs> Mary T. Dodd. Sumit Minhas. <laughs> Christiana Simke. <laughs> Rachel Hua. Danielle Aldrich. <laughs> Sarita Bahtrea. Atakari. <laughs> Work it. Aaliyah Campos. <laughs> Daisy Martinez Silas. <laughs> Louis Pham. <laughs> Jennifer Barrera. Sonny Belcher. <laughs> Ruth Bonnell. Michaela Grant. Jonathan Aston. Christia. Christiani Campello Hess. Oh, Lord. Good guy. Alexandra Guskaya Panea.
Lupe Guineos. Okay. Here I go. Here I go. Oh, here we go. Lillian Khan. Julia Rowland. <laughs> Selena Bravo Lorea. Brian Cabajal. <laughs> Kevin Wynn. Dahe Huang. Guadalupe Ramirez. Guadalupe Vega Testola. Caitlin Johnson. <laughs> Del <De, laughs> <De> Jolted <laughs> Tijuana. Justin Noonan. Leshmir Nair. Leshmir Nair. Regine Vargas. <clears throat> Eva Marie Buenas Girls. Went to Sertles. My bad. Melissa Harris. <laughs> Crystal Kimball. <laughs> Angela Brooks. Katie Gutman. Hey, hey. Julia Jones. Yeah. Tessa Blue.
Jerry Wong. Katerina Anya Yabao Yabo. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Jennifer Graham. Josh Ushijima. And now we will be in with the CRNA students. Spencer Wong. Lindsay Fisher. Brian Tang. <laughs> Kaylin Lee. <laughs> Udia <laughs> Abada. God went, okay. <laughs> Adia Abadag <laughs> Gudwad. <laughs> oh my God. Nicole Torrigino. Now we have the ABSN program. Ashin Ahmed. Go get him. Sarah Gilbert. Yan J. Lamo. Tenzin Sila. Noel Santa. Evelyn Kim. Nadia Nguyen. Marissa Christine Venueva Nueva and Company. Uh -huh. Diego Sotelo. Loris Melanie 
Todesio. Rachel Zucker Wong. Anthony Diaz. Winston Abruzzo. Gabrielle Keo Cole Mary Ann Walsh Hiromi Rowe. Zachary D. Ocampo. <laughs> Sandrine Ripo. <laughs> Patricia Gatewood. Ivana Woods. Yeah. Here, Elena Bauer. <laughs> Stephania Vlacho. Carlos Rodriguez. <laughs> Andrew Weinberg. <laughs> Megan Tannenbaum. Lamisha Nugula. Gina Roca. Jacob Roaches. Roxanne Emeril Mio <laughs> Chriselle Racho <laughs> Danelle Camacho. Lisa Ho Huang Shamira Shamira Mark <laughs> and
Angelica Moreno. Jeffrey Sujitan. Now we have, now we have the RN to BSN. Lola Taleba. Mary Grace Bad Oh, thank you. I'm messing these names up. Nicole Baptist. Baptiste. Christine Louise Armstrong. Alicia Packer. <laughs> Stephanie Wheeler DeLong. <laughs> Ernestine Aviso Macaro Crowder. Amber Jessica Odell. Huh? Oh my gosh. And now we have the BSN program. Okay. So Hela. Oregani. Lord have mercy. Latrice Johnson. All right, how you doing? Matthew Silk. Jane Nadiri Ali. And we... Anna Paula Ramos da Silva. Marley Rose. Please. Hey, hey. Mary Ann Corpus. <clears throat> Again. Mm -hmm. Lily Vallegas. Sarah Farkey. Okay. Alexis Simmons. <clears throat> Susan Owner.
at Nanelli Colon. <laughs> Sophia Kajayan. I got it. Kunchak Chudan. What is a lot of you? Tenzin Lucky. Cherry Wong. Dasha Neath. Okay. Oh my God. Oh, I can't see that. S Suda Sanik. Michelle Curtis. Oh my gosh, there we are. Sandeep Ranji. Rosanna Banks. <laughs> Kylie Borgi. <laughs> Samantha Holmesy. <laughs> Damage come chai. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Stephen Smith. Kendra Van West's Rupp. Adan Cardenas. Madeline Bonilla. <laughs> Ashley G. Aaron Frazier. Kimberly Wynn. <laughs> Malia Hat, Yasmin, not Yasmin, Karaja. Okay.
Diana Lopez Mendoza. Tiffany Vohu. Ayesha Subi. Janet Zamora. Jacqueline Montez Rodriguez. Mariela. Mariela Mangana Rocha. Glenny Lotu. Yes, I do. Yes. Heather Gallagher. Oh, my gosh. Rocha. Butra. Butra Budetta. Theo Christian Gabison. Theo Christian Gabison. Can I just get Justin Breckett? Justin Mark Resurrection. <laughs> Michaela Roberts. Brandon Legman. Montian. Ashley Montian. Rosa Maria Damacon. <laughs> Rebecca Navarretti. Oh, stop showing off. Who? Amber. Ugatin. <laughs> Judith Okiki. Elizabeth Jean Williams. <laughs> Andrea Smith. Caitlin Turner. Wow. 
Temeskin Barena. My brother. Marco Cubas. Gone Juf Hana Abasia My brother John Driesman Alexander Chiang. Hello. Diana Salazar. Here we go. Demetra Soya. Demetria Soya. Talitha. Talitha Bins. Talitha Bins. Thank you, Mr. McReynolds and the leadership team from nursing. Would members um, of the bachelors, all members of the bachelors of science of nursing, please rise. As new alumni of Sammy Merritt University, Please move your tassel on your motorboards from the right to the left. Congratulations. Please be seated. It is now my pleasure to introduce Dr. Alvin McLean, member of the Samuel Merritt University Board of Regents, who will confer the degrees. Where's, oh. <laughs> Instead, I'm gonna ask Dr. Uh, Lloyd Lees, the chair of our Samuel Merritt Board, to please come and confer the degrees. Uh, I'm pleased to present candidates for degrees, I certify to you that the students who appear before you have completed all the requirements for participation in today's ceremony. Thank you, Fred. Graduates, family members, regents, President Long, faculty and staff, on behalf of the Board of Regents, I am pleased to participate in the 2022 commencement ceremony for Samuel Merritt University. To the graduates, we congratulate you for having reached this laudable goal. As care providers, your future professional achievements will undoubtedly have an enormous impact on the quality of care. Will the candidates please rise for the conferral of their degree? That's everybody. By virtue of the authority vested in me by the Board of Regents of Samuel Merritt University and the State of California, 
I am pleased to confer on you, respectively, the degree of Master Physician Assistant, Master of Occupational Therapy, Doctor of Occupational Therapy, Doctor of Nursing Practice, Master of Science in Nursing, and Bachelor of Science in Nursing. with all of the corresponding rights, privileges, and responsibilities. Congratulations to you all. And thanks for making today so much fun for, for all of us here on the stage. Please be seated. Thank you. Before we close, um, the, the president, uh, in her remarks, uh, thanked the family and friends, thanked the faculty, staff, uh, community members, and so forth. And I just would also like to, um, once again, recognize everyone that made today possible. So thank you, everyone that contributed to today's success. One other group I would like to recognize, if there are in the audience, if there are any Samuel Merritt alumni, would you please stand and be recognized? <laughs> Graduates, you've worked so hard to be here, uh, and now you face the exciting opportunities and challenges of patient care. The responsibilities are enormous, but you've prepared yourselves well. We are confident of your talents and your commitment to providing the best care possible. What could be more important than what you're about to do now? Our best wishes and congratulations to each of you as you move on. Will all of the hall please stand and remain standing for the professional while the recessional, I'm sorry, while the platform party and the new graduates leave the theater. The commencement ceremony is now closed.